light from hell, warm like a vapor on the summer of fortune, San Francisco, the latest newborn of a great republic. I see a lot of fog and a few lights. I like it when life's hidden. It gives you a chance to imagine nice things, nicer than they are. Listen, listen to them. Men like to yell, don't they? They imagine they are millionaires already. More than that, they've all left lives behind them they didn't like. They all dream of being reborn in the new land. Do they? Or do they dream of gold? No, no, Miss Rutledge. Behind that fog lies not only sand filled with gold, but a new empire for men of vision. Men of vision? Oh, I love the fine names men give each other to hide their greed and lust for adventure. I'm amazed at your idealism, Colonel Cobb. Newspaper men are either drunkards or idealists, Miss Rutledge. I'm afraid I'm both. But however soiled his hands, the journalist goes staggering through life with a beacon raised. Beg pardon, miss. There's not much time to pay for your clearance papers. Nobody will be allowed off ship until they do. How much is it? Forty-five dollars, miss. Tell the first I'll settle before the ship leaves the port. Sorry, miss, but there'll be no going ashore unless it's paid. Here, young man. You get our luggage and a boat to take us ashore. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Colonel. I... Ah. A paltry sum to unlock the golden gates of that new empire that lies behind the fog. Miss Rutledge, you pardon an old man for interfering, but I'd like to help you. San Francisco is no place for so fair a flower as yourself. Thank you for your offer protection, Colonel Cobb. But I don't think I shall need it. Are you ready with the anchor? All right, sir. Let her go. All right. We're in, Colonel. Boat alongside, sir. This way, sir. Can you just 
step aside, please, let the lady get in here. Saffron Schmigs, a white woman. How much to take us ashore? Fifty dollars a piece in advance? Fifty dollars? Why, that's outrageous. Fifty dollars? Well, this is New Year's Eve, folks, and them's New Year's Eve prices. I know, but... Colonel, it'll be paid back when we get ashore. Jumpin' G. Hossifat, a white woman. Matter, my man. Tired? Tired? Say, I could roll from here to China and back again without even puffing. Then why the delay? Well, it's after 10 o'clock p.m. I don't get the significance of your remark. Well, after 10 o'clock, the rates go up. A blackmailer at the gates of El Dorado. But it's preposterous. Well, pay or get out, and the proposition goes for you too, miss. We are hardly in a position to walk. Well, try swimming. But but I haven't that much money. Well, over you go, then, both of you. Business is business. Oh, you wouldn't dare. I wouldn't dare. Say, you don't think they call me old atrocity for nothing, do you? Why, if I was to tell you half the trustees are committed to my time, why, you'd keel over right where you are. And another thing, there's a price in my head in every state in the Union, except in the California, and it ain't organized yet. Well, up to Daisy, over you go, and no fooling. Wait, does it mean anything to you that I came here to marry Dan Morgan? Marry Dan Morgan? Yes. The man that made the Homestead Guilty strike? Yes. Moors in the mountain. Here comes one. Who you got there? Ah, yeah, nine. No, he's a New York white woman. Whiter than a hen's egg. <laughs> Be careful, Willa! Be, be careful, Willa! <laughs> 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 get in the water, Runner! Be gentle, Willa! Get in the room, boy! She ain't gonna yes. disappear! Welcome to San Francisco, miss. Thank you, sir. Happy New Year to the gentlemen of San Francisco. On behalf of the assembled multitude, allow me to wish you likewise. That's right. And many others. Thank you, gentlemen. But would someone please help Colonel Carver? Oh, I'd swim around the horn with my hands tied if you asked it, miss. Here comes the San Francisco partner. Colonel Marcus Aurelius Cobb is the name, gentlemen. That's fine. Well, is there anything we can do if for you? If you're chilly, miss, you can have my coat. Here, mine's Are yours. you hungry, miss? Yeah, you can have me roast, boiled, or fried. We can dig up something better than old monkey meat for the you, miss. Donna serves the best steaks in town. Well, thank you, gentlemen, but I came here to meet Mr. Dan Morgan. Does anyone know where he is? She's Dan Morgan's fiancée. You came all the way from New York to marry Dan Morgan? There seems to be some mystery, gentlemen. Mr. Morgan wrote me that if he couldn't meet me, somebody would be here to take me to the Homestead Gully. I'd like to go there if it isn't too far. Does anyone know where it is? But you see, Miss uh, uh, Homestead Gully has been taken off the map. Would you like a little drink, Miss? Well, could you tell me where I could find Mr. Morgan? Well, uh... Go on, Jed. You've been doing all the talking. Well, I hate to be the first to break the news, Miss, but... Uh, Mr. Morgan has been taken off the map. Likewise. He's dead. <laughs> He's dead on the doornail. Shut up, you farmer. Here, miss, drink this. How did it happen? Well, miss, you see, the red come up 13 times straight in a row. And the gold mine changed hands. After which unfortunate incident, why, Mr. Morgan uh, sort of, sort of had a uh, misunderstanding. Oh, I'm afraid he was a bad loser, miss. San Francisco is no place for a bad loser. Especially if you're not so quick on the draw. But gee, wasn't miss. I never see a man in my life take so long to pull a gun. In fact, he got drilled right clean. Shut up, or I'll... And there's nothing. No.
Miss Rutledge, allow me to offer my heartfelt sympathy. I don't know why I'm crying, Colonel Cobb. But that's what men expect of women, isn't it? That they should cry. You poor child. Well, it seems my first claim hasn't panned out so well. You don't fool me, my dear. You're hurt. Can't I be of some assistance? You don't understand, Colonel Cobb. I never loved Dan Morgan. But you were going to marry him. Yes. He must have meant something to you. He meant a million dollars. Miss Rutledge, I'm shocked. Why? Because I'm not pretending an emotion I don't feel. Oh, you poor dear. Let me take you back to the ship. Oh, no. No. I'm not running away. I came here to get something. And I'm going to get it. Yes, but San Francisco is no place for a woman. Why not? I'm not afraid. I like this new world. I like the noise of something happening. No, San Francisco's no place for a bad loser, man or woman. Dan Morgan was a bad loser. Well, I'm not. I'm staying. I'm tired of dreaming, Colonel Cobb. I'm staying. I'm staying and holding out my hands for gold. Bright yellow gold. Dan Morgan's money. Oh, I'd forget about that money if I were you, miss. Because you ain't ever going to get it back. Who got the money? It's in the hands of the worst fiend in San Francisco. What's his name? His name is Louis Shamali. He owns the biggest gambling parlor in California. The Belladonna. You know, the one we was telling you about. Gentlemen, I'm hungry. Of course you are. Sure. I should like to have supper at the Belladonna. Well, 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 I'll well, show well, you the best thing. Well, 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 sit down there. Well, go down. Street can tag get me. I see. Wait, 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 China and sure perfume up the street. Come on, make way for a lady. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, this is worse than the fabric of Africa. Don't worry, Mr. Swell. Look out, here comes some more China. Pigtail. Why? Well, if you cut off a Chinaman's pigtail, he can't go to heaven, according to their religion. That's the reason they're carrying on so. It's outrageous, gentlemen. Outrageous. Surely you will not allow persecution of this sort to raise its ugly head in this new land. Look out there. Why, the Chinese are the oldest civilization in the world. We must not be intolerant. We must respect their beliefs. We must... We must... We, we, we must get me out of here. <laughs> a couple more minutes, we get in China. <laughs> well, you went on Sacramento Avenue. They lost a burrow down there last week and ain't found hiding your hair yet. Gentlemen, shall we go on to the Belladonna? Yes. Sure. Sure. Don't give you a wrong impression of our fair city, Colonel. Rome wasn't built in a day, gentlemen. The paths of empire have always started in the mud and ended in glory. I shall make that the subject of my first editorial. <laughs>
To meet the little lady, too. This is Jack Boone. Yes. Speaking about marriage, yes. I am. Yes. I sure hope you're going to like it out here. Sure, do, Mom. <laughs> I'm not as serious about that marriage question, Mom. Huh? Indeed, I am. I'll get back to work. Sure. <laughs> yes, sir, Missy. We're taking on more than 100 ounces a day. And that's yeah. more than. Ain't somebody gonna introduce me? My name is Louis Shamali. I'm very glad to know you, sir. Thank you. I like that seat. I think I'm going to like it very much. Well, that's fine. I own it. Much pleasure, gentlemen. This is on the house. <laughs> I drink nothing but rye. I go. Drink some wine. I hear that you come out here to marry Dan Morgan. Yes. Well, there's no accountant for taste. You'd have been throwing yourself away on him. Yeah? You'd have been throwing yourself away. Well, you ain't told me your name yet. My name is Mary Rutledge. Nice name. I am Colonel Marcus Aurelius Cox, sir. I'm glad to know you. Miss Rutledge is not staying here, sir. Is that true? Depends on how much I like your towel. Oh, Miss Rutledge, I beg you to reconsider. Uh, good night, Mr. Cobb. Hope we'll see you around here often. Why? Oh, good night, Colonel Cobb. And thank you. Fred. Ready? That's because I didn't know. How do you feel? Oh, I feel like New Year's morning, Mr. Shumali. <laughs> you know, I kind of thought you might, so I brought you something. Go on, take it. We call this a prairie oyster. It'll make you feel better. Thank you. Well, you made up your mind about uh, what I told you last night? Let me see. It was something about uh, marriage, wasn't it? Oh, no, that wasn't me. Have you something better to offer? Then I'll let you and me understand each other. You ain't staying in San Francisco for to go into society, are you? You're staying here for gold. And you didn't bring a pick and shovel with you, either. You seem to have everything all figured out. You're quite right. I'm staying for gold. Well, then you'll be glad to hear that you found it. I take it, Mr. Shamali, that your journey's end. Yeah, hmm? Huh? Yeah, that's me. Say, now look here. 
You had a lot of the boys last night laying bags of gold at them little feet of yours. Well, them bags of gold is mine. Only I don't have to dig and sweat to get them. Oh, I see. They shovel it out of the ground and they hand it to you across the table with the little wheel on it. Well, you're highfalutin, but you're smart, ain't you? Oh, yes, I'm smart. Hey, you got a pretty way of holding your head. What's your proposition, Mr. Shamali? All right. You work at the table, see? You're worth a lot of me as an attraction. Why, they'll come swarming in here like flies around a pot of honey. How would you like to get part of all the gold that's dug up around here? Suppose I lose. Ah, uh, you lose only when you want it. And you win when you want it. That's the kind of a little wheel it is. Is that the wheel Dan Morgan played? Very same one. Head feel better? Very much better, thank you. Well, then it's a bargain, huh? Yes. Good. Like a swan, ain't it? That's what you're like. Soft and slick. A swan. Just one thing more, Mr. Shamali. I suggest you get used to knocking on doors. All right, swan. Shut up before I start doing some more chasing. Kind of looks like they'll have to build a couple more stores here pretty soon. You like this one? It's very nice, sir. Looks right pretty on you. I don't like that. She can be the honoriest critter. Oh, shut up. I like her when she talks like that. See this. See here how it's made here. Well, if it ain't the mayor of this thriving metropolis. Louis! <laughs> Good morning, Mr. Mayor. Say, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Miss Rutledge. Swan, I want... I'm sorry, sir, but I'm with my wife. Come, my dear. Why, the ungrateful coyote. A two-faced hyena. Why, I made a mayor of this town. Now stop him being mayor. I wouldn't do that. Why, I... I wouldn't do that. Why, he insulted me. No, he didn't. He just insulted me, that's all. Well, I don't like that either. You'll get used to it, Louis. So will I. Right now, then, I have one beautiful gown. I'll show him, and that horse face he calls his wife. Buzzard me, that's what she is. Very nice, my dear. Give me that. Which one, sir? The one she's got her paws on. Go on, take it. It's mine now. I bought it. Uh, sorry, miss. This belongs to Mr. Shimali. Hey, I'm buying that, too. It's mine. Put it back. What's that, sir? You heard what I said. I don't approve of your behavior, sir. No, you don't, huh? No, sir. Well, it's my behavior, and it's good enough in this town. Now I'll show you some real behavior. I'm buying this and that and that. I'm buying all this, understand? It's mine now. I don't want anyone else touching it. I'm buying everything in the store. Do you want the fish, too? No, I'll throw the fish to the mayor's wife. She looks hungry. <laughs> Make your play, gentlemen. Make your play. There we go. Well, I'm on, I got a hundred red. I think I got one. Twenty-two, even, black. You lose, sir. 
I've never seen anything like it. The black has come up six times in a row. The red's bound to come up soon, mister. Uh, Sobuck's McTavish is my name. And I'm the luckiest man in the world. I'm sure you are, sir. Make your plays, gentlemen. Make your plays, sir. Heist them on the red, Sandy. Go slow, Sawbucks. You and me work with that for a whole year. I'm tired of bending over, lifting gold over the ground. I want to pick it up off the table, standing up. Let her go. Say, how much is there? We'll weigh it when the gentleman wins. Aye. How about Britain's just half, Sawbucks? It plays me. All of it, sir? All of it. You're daft, man. Daft am I. Oh. Who was it pulling Bonanza Creek? I'm the luckiest man in the world. I never lose. Eleven black. Oh. Pull in your whiskers, then. I want to talk to you. I don't want to hear no scolding. It is bad. It's a it's loss to the prettiest pair of blue eyes I ever seen. Make your bet, sir, or get out. You were nicer to me a little while ago. You better skedaddle, Romeo. Sawbuck McTavish never skedaddled for a lady yet. Come on, let's go somewhere and celebrate. Okay. Take care of it, Michael. Drunk. I wasn't too drunk for gambling, and I'm no too drunk for luck. He asked for a gentleman. I guess he didn't read the sign. Go on, pick him up and take him out of here. Come on, take him out. You've no hand the last of us. Make your plays, gentlemen. Come along. see what he's up to. Wait a minute, partner. Where are you going? I saw the way she ran that wheel. Yeah? How? Oh. Crooked. And I'm going to tell the whole town. I'm going to tell them all. There's your man, Sheriff. No Chinaman allowed in here. He's with us. Go ahead. Knuckles, I'm sorry. Now, what's on your mind? Nothing serious, Louis. I uh, will do the talking, Sheriff. Sandy Ferguson was murdered last night. Shot in the back. Now, now, boys, you know, murder's a pretty big word. Never mind, I'm... Joe. All right, he was murdered. What about it? We've sworn out a warrant for the man that did it. Yeah, and before we're through, you'll tell us who ordered it done. Got a warrant, huh? All printed out and everything. Serve it, Sheriff. Simply a matter of uh, routine. Come on, come on, serve it and take him along. Yeah, not so fast, boys, not so fast. Where do you think you're taking Knuckles? He's going to stand trial for murder. Well, you don't have to take him anywhere for that. Want a trial, huh? <laughs> All right. Hey, Judge. What is it? How dare... What? Oh, my dear Louis. Well, I'm afraid it's rather late, so I think I'll go home. No, no, you're not going home. Oh, but I... I now, now to... steady, Judge, steady. Pardon me. You got a little work for you, Judge. Indeed? Seems that a fellow named Ferguson has just been killed. Who? Ferguson, ain't it? Uh, well, uh, what's, uh, what's the matter with him? Just been killed. Who? Yeah, ain't it a shame? Oh, it's appalling. Who did it? There's your man. Uh, which one? Him. Oh, Knuckles, oh. Yes, we've got a warrant for him. We're going to put him in jail until court opens. Oh, uh, court's open now. Uh, well, go ahead, Judge. But, my dear, Why do they know court? It's a saloon. Well, it's whatever he says it is. But, my dear, Go ahead, okay. Judge. The court's open. Hear ye, hear ye, oh, this honor of court is now in session. Gentlemen, I must insist upon absolute silence. <laughs> and will you uh, kindly remove your hats? Now, gentlemen, Knuckles is accused of homicide. Who's seen him do it? That fellow was right there. This is the man. Oh, come, come, gentlemen. You can't expect me to take the word of a Chinaman. Did any American witness this homicide? Oh, there ain't any question who did it, Judge. Come on, get going. Oh, hold your horses. This court is not going to be hurried. And, Louis, will you please stop the music during the trial? I can't concentrate. 
Yeah, give the judge a drink. Uh, thank you. Hey, Fred, quiet on that noise. Mm, uh, that's better. Now, Mr. Slocum, are you prepared to swear on these statements are true? Sure. Oh, you are? Well, let me put it to you, that if Knuckles did commit this crime, that he must have had some reason. Why, of course he had a reason. There you are, Thank Judge. You. This man Ferguson passed a remark about Miss Rutledge. He was vulgar. What? He insulted a lady? Gentlemen, do you hear that? He insulted a lady, a woman, that sensitive vessel, which from our childhood... Hurry up, hurry up. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Well, under the evidence... Hurry up, Judge. The case is dismissed. Oh, Good day, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Have another drink, Judge. Now, there's your trial. I hate to see you fellas make mistakes like this. Might go bad with you sometime. We'll be back, Shamali. Now, don't come around here wasting my time anymore. Get out of here. Come on, get out! Come on, Jed. Let's get away. Our wing! Knuckles. I'm just going to cut your pigtail off. Hey, yelling about there's nothing to wash in heaven. What do you want to go there for? Let him go. I'm afraid, my dear Louis, I really must be going. And so, I shall bid you good day, sir. Good day, Your Honor. Thank you. Printing press. She worked fine. Yeah. Mr. Green, sir. Oh, gentlemen, welcome. Glad to see you all. Well, we want to talk. You know you. Mr. Joseph Wiggum, don't you? How do you do, uh, you gentlemen? You're just in time to help christen our new printing press, the beacon that is to guide the destiny of our fair city. I'm glad to hear you say that, Colonel, because we want your help. Gentlemen, I am at your service. Go on, tell him, Jack. We want you to write something about Louis Shamali. Yeah, criticize yeah. him. For being a murderer. And running this town like a jungle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We want to know if you have the courage to print in your newspaper exactly what is wrong with San Francisco. That's right. Yeah, that's what we Gentlemen, I've waited a long time for this. She's oiled, inked, and we're both ready. The Clarion is at your service in any cause that will help make San Francisco a better city to live in. Yeah, that's oh, just what we want. It is what we want. You'll just sit down and I'll listen to your story. Come on, please. All right, shut it off. Here it is, sir. The first issue of the Clarion, Mr. Wiggum. Look at that makeup. Look at that type. Oh, it looks mighty neat. Oh, this is something I've dreamed of. I'm a new man, Mr. Wiggum. Forgiven for my journalistic sins. Restored to my profession. <laughs> There's nothing that can touch it. One of you stay here. What's the meaning of this, sir? That's your newspaper? Yes. Well, let me see it. Hmm. You want law and order, huh? Well, I'm the law around here, and I give the orders. What are you butting in for? Did I ever do you any hurt? This is not a personal matter, sir. This is something much hey, more now, than Now, listen. That. Everybody gets along fine in this town who minds his own business. And you're trying to spoil San Francisco by printing this kind of stuff. Is that the machine was printed on? Mr. Wiggum, get Mr. Slocum to the Mr. Knuckles, what are you going to do? You just watch close and you'll see. Smash that machine. You can't do that! Oh, I can't, huh? Smash it. Oh, no word left it. Sir. And after you finish, burn down the building. You can't do that, oh, I tell you! He's outrageous. He's an old man. Well, he ain't gonna get much older acting the way he does. Go on, break it up. No, no, Mr. Shimano, you can't do that! You mustn't do that! You... Wait a minute. Louis. I don't want you to do this. Why, well, get out of here, Swan. This is business. Then it's my business, too. Get out of here and let me handle this my own way. I don't like your way. I've never said anything before, and now I'm saying it. All right, have your saying, get out. You've done enough things I haven't liked. I want him to have his paper. See, now listen, I said, Swan. let him have his paper. Tell Knuckles to get out.
Go on, get up. Get out, will you? You heard what she said. Go on, get out! Hey, you still want your paper? Mr. Shamali, if you destroy my press, you destroy me. More than that, you destroy the soul of San Francisco. A city can't... Now cut out the high sound and talk and answer me. Do you want your paper? Yes. Well, then run it the way you should run it. What way is that? My way. Next time you do anything, write anything, or think anything, just ask yourself, how would Louis Shamali like it? Understand? Is that what makes the writing on the paper? Yes. Well, I don't want anybody reading this kind of stuff. You still got your little plaything. Come on, Swan. I'll come in a moment. Thank you, Miss Rutledge. I couldn't have stood it if they'd broken it. There isn't much use this way, though, is it? A poor, shame thing that mustn't speak. It can speak, Colonel. Let it speak the language of the town. Lies, hypocrisy, and more lies. The beacon of the new empire. Mr. Shamali's empire. Is this true about Sandy Ferguson? You should know better than I, Miss Rutledge. talk to you. This is true, isn't it? Sure. Why did you kill Sandy Ferguson? For business reasons. Our bargains included lots of things, Louis, but this wasn't one of them. I don't like it. See, now listen, Swan, I'm running this town, and there's only one way to run it. My way. I'm beginning to learn that. And it isn't a pleasant lesson. Oh, come on, come on, Swan, have a drink. I want up on you. So you haven't thanked me yet for letting the Colonel have his paper. Thank you. You seemed almost human for a moment. Well, then how about you being human for a change, huh? I'd like another drink, please. Swan, why don't you ever kiss me of your own accord, huh? Why don't you ever put your arms around me and kiss me like you meant it? Wait till I have my drink. I don't want that kind of love. Listen. I'm sick of you talking to me like that. I'm sick of you looking at me like I was a snake in a cold skin. Stop it, you're drunk. I told you I'd wait, didn't I? Well, I waited long enough. You going to love me or you're through? You going to say you love me and mean it? I don't want any woman looking at me like you do. You going to say you love me, you love me, or get out! I heard you. Don't keep repeating it. Is that all you've got to say? Just that I'm going. Oh, so you're going, are you? Where? Don't you know there isn't a man in San Francisco would speak to you if you went out of here? Because they know I'll kill him. I'll kill the first man you talk to. What do you want me to do? Lie? Lie and pretend I have a heart? Do you think I'm still Mary Rutledge? Do you think I'm still a white woman? Oh, shut up. Look at me, Louis. Look in my eyes. What do you see? It isn't pretty, is it? Well, I'm just what you see there. Oh, take what you can get, Louis, and let it go at that. Let's enjoy our mud puddle. Where are you going? I'm going riding. I want the wind and the air on me. Yeah, but it's going to rain. I like the rain, too. Swan. I want to talk to you. About last night, I... Forget it, Louis. I'm trying to. I'll be back in time to run the table.
sorry to break in on you like this, mister, but it's getting pretty wet out there. Well, what's the matter? I can't get over it. Over what? How beautiful a woman is. I'd almost forgotten, so help me. Did you ever read about Balboa when he first caught sight of the Pacific Ocean man? What are you talking about? He fainted with pure joy. You're the most peculiar desert rat I've seen yet. <laughs> Would you mind very much if I looked at you, if I promised not to faint? Say, you're pretty wet, ma'am. <laughs> Don't you think you ought to hang those clothes of yours in front of the fire to dry? Well... Oh, I'm afraid there's only this one room, but... I'll either have to go outside or else I, I could use my willpower and turn my back. Turn around, mister. Yes, ma'am. I apologize for this place, ma'am. You see, I only found it myself a few minutes ago. That's how I happened to join the gold rush. It's a case of either going to work for my father or finding the golden fleece. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm gabbing my silly head off, but I, I haven't talked to anybody for two years except Napoleon and Josephine, my two burrows. I reckon you met them outside. What did you talk to them about? Oh, about cakes of soap, and whether I'd shave or not, and lamb kidneys and wine sauce for breakfast we used to have at home. You're from New York, aren't you? 14 Gramercy Park. Gramercy Park. I used to play there when I was a little girl. <laughs> Say, you weren't that little brat with a Shetland pony, ma'am. No. No, I don't think you know me. I was raised under a bell jar with forget-me-nots in my hair. Clothes dry yet? I'll well, see. Yes, I guess they're about to cook now, ma'am. Uh, I'm afraid I'll have to use my willpower again. And pardon my curiosity, ma'am, but I'm amazed to find anyone like you blooming away in this arid land of gold. You live in San Francisco? No. No, I'm... Uh... I'm just visiting here. Alone? No. No, my family's with me, naturally. Oh, prospecting? No, we're... We're just visiting someone who owns a ranch. You can turn around now. Would you mind my asking you who you are, ma'am? My name's Mary Rutledge. Mm. Pleased to meet you, Miss Rutledge. My name's James Carmichael. I've never seen you before, have I? In uh, San Francisco? Oh, no, I've never been there only to get off the boat and now to get on it again. Oh, you're leaving the West. Yes, shipping out like Sinbad with his loot. Oh, here it is. You know, I've been poking around for this silly stuff for about two years. I keep expecting it to vanish like the figments of a dream, but <laughs> safe now. That is, if I can get by the harpies of San Francisco. The harpies? Yes, ma'am. Although some people call them by other names. Say, can I help you button that? Thank you. You remember how Ulysses had to stuff cotton in his ears to keep from hearing the song of the sirens? <laughs> well, they're gonna have to sing awfully loud for me. What does a harpy look like? Oh, they got snakes in their hair and cat's eyes and no hearts at all. You can always tell them easy. Oh. You know, this is more fun than digging gold. If you weren't a lady from Gramercy Park and I weren't a sort of a poetical halfwit, full of the most idiotic respect for beauty and grace and gentility, I'd... You'd what, Mr. Carmichael? I'd act a lot different than I've been acting. You've been very charming, sir. Yeah, it's the trouble with being a poet at heart. You always have to be charming at the wrong time. You don't mind the sort of loose talk, I hope, ma'am. Oh. <laughs> there. Well, I guess you're button now and forever. It seems to have stopped raining. I think we'd better go. I kind of had an idea we were never going to leave here, but I guess that's impractical. I'm afraid it is. How am I going to write to you if I don't know where you live, ma'am? I really write awfully well. Something like Shelley when I'm in the mood. Say, I'll read you something he wrote. You haven't time, Mr. Carmichael. This is my road. And that's yours to the boat. And the lamb chop and wine saw. Oh, lamb kidneys, ma'am. Only, only they don't seem so important now. Can't I see you home? You'll miss the boat, Mr. Carmichael. Well, Aren't I ever going to see you again? Please, I'd like to remember it just like this. The rain, the fog, and a poet from Gramercy Park with his bags of gold. 
Let's just leave it that way. It's awfully hard to live poetry, ma'am. Goodbye, Mr. Carmichael. Well, oh, will, will you take this as a present, then, and read it to yourself and pretend I wrote it? Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey! You don't want a couple of jackasses to remember me by. No. No, thank you. Goodbye. It's kind of foggy, ain't it, Josephine? Maybe that old boat won't sail after all. Well, where have you been? I've been worried about you. I've been riding, Louie, in Gramercy Park. What are you talking about? There ain't no Gramercy Park around here. I guess you're right, Billy. Say, is something the matter? Did anything happen? A lot happened. What? Got caught in the rain. Got soaked. Rode back a thousand miles. And here I am. That's all that matters, isn't it? Yeah. That's all that matters. Guess I better change my things. It's no use your going aboard tonight, sir. That is, unless you want to. We ain't sailing till this fog lifts. How soon do you expect that? Oh, that'll be a day or two. I'll be seeing you on deck, sir. <laughs> well, now, that's mighty discouraging, stranger. Yes, it is. You hit it rich and home and bound, eh? Yes. You don't figure on standing here till the fog lifts, do you, son? Well, I don't know. Reason tells me that's about the smartest thing to do, to stand right here. Yeah, but I've been too reasonable all day. There's something I kind of left up in the air that I'd like to attend to. Well, say, how about a nice home-cooked meal first? Lead on, sir. <laughs> Mighty lucky you met up with the these runners can protect you from the barrels of the city. Yeah. <laughs> yes, sirree, they had me hemmed in, so I pulled my gun and I took one down there and one there. Hey, and I started... hey, take it easy. You might hurt somebody. <laughs> don't be afraid, son. It ain't loaded. Not loaded. No, I don't depend on firearms for protection. It's the power of my mighty muscles that scares them away. If you were to know some of the things I've done with my bear, say, here's a right nice homey place for a stranger son, the Belladonna. Oh, yes, I've heard of it. Hey, maybe you'd like me to help you carry some of that gold. You'd like to string yourself. Oh, never mind. Thanks just the same. Well, it's a shame not to take advantage of my strength, but have it your own way. Some folks is mighty suspicious for no reason. Hey, I never saw more grand larceny behind one pair of whiskers in my life. You ain't fooling, son? No. <laughs> so, you know, most folks just don't seem to realize how bad I am. Let's sit here and I'll fetch a Garson. What's a Garson? Oh, that's what we call waiters in San Francisco, Garson. Hey, Garson. Kind of a stylish nickname. Garson, come, 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 come. What's your hollering? What do you want? Fresh of me, you got now. She'll be off in the earth. Start shoving. <laughs> We're always fooling. Give us a minute and we'll get us a couple more drinks. And you better make it a bottle, Judy, sweetie. That last was French. Let's wet the whistles. I think I'll have, uh... Makes me look a little more ferocious. What that says, number three is the best meal. What's she doing here? Oh, oh her? <laughs> Told you it was a nice homey place. That's the lady known as Swan. The Swan? Yep. How long has she been in this place? Brought her in myself on a night just like this, right off in the flying cloud. Here's your bottle. She come alone? Yeah, but Mr. Shimali wanted her services exclusive for the Belladonna. Does she ever live on a ranch? Huh? A ranch? Well, the joke's on me. Say, but if you're looking for fun, there it is. Win or lose. It's a pleasure just to stand aside her at the table. <laughs> Can you see from here whether she has snakes in her hair? Oh, now, Sean, go easy on that liquor. <laughs> Lucky not admirer, Swan. 
Call it Quiver and Fry's Lucky Union. Ten luck. Even. Old man advised me. Are those snakes in her hair or forget me not? It's all right, Twan. He's just a little young and been drinking. No, they're not snakes. They're diamonds. Now, but she's got lovely cat's eyes. What's the delay, Swan? Come on, Come on spin on. Make your plays, gentlemen. Come on, turn around. Make your plays. Give us a play. Quiet, quiet. I want to hear the song of the siren. Ah, son, that ain't no way to talk to a lady. Most humbly apologize. Forgot she was raised under a bell jar with a sprig of forget-me-nots in her hair. 21, red. 21, waiter. I'll take that. Let's drink together, man. To me, James Carmichael. <laughs> the dumbest jackass that ever came hee-hawing into San Francisco. <laughs> put your money up, you, I'll get out. Yeah, come on, put up your money. Come on, spin that wheel, let's get going. Wait, hold on. Right. Here it goes. Gramercy Park versus the hallucination. You better get it weighed first, son. We'll wait for the gentleman when he wins. Black. The color of women's heart. Easy, son. You ain't gonna get no place in them sentiments. A little less fancy talk, stranger. I'm sorry to give offense. Seven. And red. You lose this one time, son. But if at first you don't succeed, well, try it. Try again. That's my motto since a child. Is that it? Yes, sir. Knuckles. Give him this. Hey, our stranger. I'm the house. Thank you. It's hospitable of you. Make your bets, gentlemen. Make your... Had enough of you? Not so fast, sir. Not so fast. Gee, what's he gonna do? Cut it all up? Yeah. Well, you ain't betting all at once, are you, son? On the black. Come on, you want to spin that wheel? Does it all go? Go on, roll your hoop. Round, round the old willow tree. Come on, old man of the sea, drink to the little ball. And it's red. Who won? The red. Yes, sir, the red come up again. That's not my color. You lost. Just like I did. You lost like Sawbucks and McCavish. Cover up your back of the structure like they did Sandy. Get out. I seal it. I seal it. Get out. Madam Swan. Galahad. The pure in heart and the expert dress about it. Lay the black will win. And the harpies will weep. Don't get excited, stranger. Come on, check him out. Drag him out. Please go away, Louis. Oh, come on, open the door. Say, I got something for you. Part of the money you want tonight. I don't want it. Keep it. What are you asking so hot for? <laughs> I don't know. Just, just go away and leave me alone. <laughs> Women are like frogs. You can never tell which way they're going to jump.
to see. Hmm? How are you? Well, son, <laughs> still feel a little depressed over your bad luck last night. Oh, yes. I remember. Say, you know I never seen the light before. Yeah, well, let it dampen that fine western spirit of yours. I still have two burrows left. <laughs> That's right, you did. Jane got them now. They run away. Very interesting city. Surprised I have my boots. Any complaints? Oh, no. No complaints. Wisdom was never bought at so cheap a price. Do you still feel pretty bad, son? Maybe it's something yet. <laughs> Gall and wormwood sit hard on the delicate stomach. Uh, uh, gentlemen, I don't want to depress you with my problems, uh, but is there any way for the shorn lamb to earn enough money for his passage home? Uh, a shorn lamb of infinite accomplishments and uh, a great mass of personal charm. Say, I like the way he talks. I don't. Nobody is asking you. I like a windbag like that around. Go on, get him something to do. If you say so. Get busy on those. Oh, you mean these interesting vessels? We call them spittoons, and we like them shiny. Well, with all deference to my benefactor, I think I'll call them cuspidors. Like a useful member of society at last. Well, that's fine. Hey, did you ever wait on table? No. I'm sure I have a talent for it. Well, you can begin now. It ain't hard to be a garson. All you gotta do is stick up your rice when they get fresh with you, see? And always take a bottle in your right hand. I mean, when they come to... Well, I may spoil her appetite. Good morning. Would you like to see the menu, ma'am? What are you doing here? Oh, I'm waiting for your order, ma'am. I don't want you around here. Well, I don't blame you after last night. I'm very glad of this chance to apologize. I don't like sarcasm so early in the day from waiters. Well, there's no sarcasm intended, ma'am. You hate me while hiding behind a lot of silly words. Well, I don't think that's a very accurate account of my feelings, ma'am. The worst I feel is kind of philosophical. Well, what are you standing there for? I told you I don't want you around here. Well, if you don't mind, I'd like to work here until I get enough money to take a boat back to New York. You could steer clear of the harpies next time. Uh, what would you have for breakfast, ma'am? Would you like to see the menu? I'll give you your fare back to Gramercy Park, Mr. Carmichael. I'm sorry, but I have some notion on the subject of handouts. You mean I'm not good enough to give you money? I mean I'm not bad enough to take it, ma'am. Well, if you don't hate me, I hate you, Mr. Carmichael, because with all of your talk about being a poet, you're small and mean and righteous, no different from the rest of them. Uh, would you like to see menu, ma'am? Bring me some toast with butter on it and some coffee and jam and, yes, some lamb kidneys and wine sauce. Yes, ma'am. May I, uh... I just met a fellow who told me something very interesting. I told you what was going to happen to you if I ever caught you lying. Well, I caught you. What a pleasant way to begin a conversation, Louis. Before breakfast, too. He wasn't alone in the rain. You mean yesterday. You know what I mean. Yeah, yesterday. You were seen. Oh, come out with it, Louis. Don't sit there like a dog barking at a cat up a tree. I was seen doing what? Well, who was he? Well, who was who? Who was the man you were with yesterday? Who was he? You're hurting my arm, Louis. I'll hurt worse than that if you don't tell me the truth. You were seen with him yesterday down by the water, standing there talking to him. Who was he? Louis, I told you. I beg your pardon, ma'am. There are no lamb kidneys. Would you like the wine sauce by itself? Hey, we're talking, can't you see? Go on, get out of here. Get out! Sure. Who was he? Louis, I... I told you I got lost in the fog, and I... I stopped somebody to ask the way, and... He told me. That isn't a hanging offense, is it? I'll find out if you're lying. Hey, you waiter. 
Bring me, bring me a steak and a piece of pie. Did you hear about the Chinaman being killed last night? Yes. I was wondering, Colonel, if I couldn't kind of weave it into this piece about the climate, saying how sorry we was that the Chinaman was going to miss the salubrious spell of weather we're expecting next week. All topics sound hollow and commonplace compared to the glorious climate of California, Mr. Wiggum. Mr. McTavish was in again. What did he want? He had an item for the paper about the roulette wheel at the Belladonna. He says it's crooked. And they stole a small fortune from a young fellow playing there last night. It's quite an interesting item, Colonel. Avoid all mundane matter, sir, and we shall flourish like a green bay tree. <laughs> the beacon of the press. In the hell to which all journalists must descend when they die, Mr. Wiggum, we shall sit at red-hot desks with quills of fire in our hand and spend eternity on eternity writing about the salubrious weather of that region. Let us serve our apprenticeship here thoroughly and intelligently. How do you spell Aurora Borealis? Call it Mr. Shamali's rosy finger dawn. You've got eyes. Go on and read it. It's news, that's what it is. News you wouldn't print in that yellow dog paper of yours. You'd better not put that up, Mr. McTavish. There'll be trouble. Aye, there will that. I strongly advise against it, sir. Mr. McTavish, take that down. You had... You... I warned you, sir. Go on back inside and write a story about the climate. Stop where you are, sir. Stop where you are. This is the first honest news that Clarion has ever had, and it's going to stay there. Stop! Stop, Ray! Mr. Wiggum. Mr. Wiggum. Everything, thanks. Mr. Wiggum. Oh, bad. Get a doctor, quick. Sure. Lend a hand here, something. Mr. Wiggum, I want you to change the policy of the clarion. I want you to write a story I should have written myself long ago. I want you to tell people of San Francisco that no city can exist without law and order. You do try to talk, Colonel. <laughs> <coughs> Write a story of, about that flag. Write that whatever it flies, it brings a promise of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. There are some people in this town who don't seem to know that. Let the clarion tell them. Print the news. I will. I will. We'll carry on. Law and order. <laughs> got a job. We're here to help you. Who are you coming with me? I don't need anybody to go with me. Last we got a paper in this town. All about law and order. Here you are. The clarion. 
take one. Voice of San Francisco, no charge, brother. All about law and order, Ken. Play a pig, law and order. She's a come to San Francisco. Buy the pay. She's a free. Law and order in San Francisco. <laughs> law and order. That's a new one on you, eh, brother? Law and order in San Francisco. Hey, law, come get it. Law and order in a chance stay. Law and order. Law and order. I'll give them some law and order. A lot of them running around down there, selling those things all over the street. And they've got guns to back them up. Yeah, well, I've got guns, too. The first thing to do is to bust up the machine that printed this, like I should have done. Go down to the newspaper, take some of the boys with you. I won't need anybody. So you killed Colonel Cobb? Louis, you must be crazy. Do you think you can go on killing oh, never mind about that. I found this under your pillow. Who gave it to you? It's about love. Poems. Who gave it to you? Do you want me to take the little wheel tonight? I'll find out who he is without you. But I'm giving you a chance. I want you to tell me. There's nothing to tell. Some rat with a book of poems. So that's what you went for. That's what made you start pushing me away. Who is he? Stop it! I suppose stop he took it. you in his arms and made you happy. Oh, shut up, you fool, you stupid fool. Nobody's touched me, nobody's going to. Well, he you and you. nobody else. He nobody kissed you, you didn't he? And you kissed him back like he never done to me. Throwing yourself free of some breath. I wish I had. I wish I could tell you something to make you howl and shoot. I'll do the shooting. But somebody else is going to do the howling. Here he comes. Anybody with you? Keep on walking, Mr. Jacoby. Which way? We'll steer you. Turn right here. Call this a fair fight? You're not in a fight, Mr. Jacoby. You're on trial, Nathan. For what, Burger? Where's the trial gonna be? The trial is going on now, sir. Can I get word to Shamali to get me a lawyer? I'm representing you, sir. The gun in my back. That's right. Is this the man you saw shoot down McTavish and Colonel Cobb? That's him. Allow me to cross-examine the witness, Mr. Slocum. Are you sure, sir? Dead certain. Where's the rope? Who do you think you are? We're vigilantes, sir. You're what? The vigilantes. We're bringing law and order to San Francisco. What kind of monkey business is this? I thought you said there was going to be a trial. You've been tried, Knuckles. I didn't hear any trial. There wasn't any judge or jury. Gentlemen, what is your verdict? Guilty. 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 No, wait a minute. Guilty. You can't do this. Get Louis Shamali. Get me Louis Shamali. My town is going to stay my town. But the truth, shut up! Climb up there and take him down. Vigilantes, huh? <laughs> Come on. Kind of quiet around here, ain't it? Them vigilantes sure depressed the business. Troubling you. Uh, 
I'm feeling pretty low tonight, son. Seeing old knuckles hanging up out there sort of reminded me I'd done something I don't like. Mm, that's easy to believe. You're right. I'm a no good, terrible old man with the heart of a coyote. Yes, I'm certain of it. I wish you weren't so ready to believe me. Why? Well, it makes it harder to confess. Confess what? Mm, well, uh, I ain't going to beat about the bush, son. There's one thing that's bothering my black soul in particular. Um, well, I found something that don't belong to me. There it is. You recognize it? Somebody dropped it by mistake. Oh, well, that's mine. I was wondering. Say, where'd you get it? Uh, uh, um, off on the floor. Don't look at me like that, son. Say you forgive me. Just say it once. Thanks. <laughs> the first decent thing I've done in my whole black life <laughs> sort of overwhelms me. I feel like a like a little white kitten reborn. <laughs> uh, may I reward you, sir? Uh, oh, the reward. Say, I took that out myself in advance so as not to delay matters with any bickering. Oh, I see. Thanks again. Say, son, looks like the fog's going to lift and that boat will be sailing with the tide. You ship another? Yes. Well, kind of hate to see you go, son, but things will be more suitable in the east. The ports and failures. Well, this is the second time we say goodbye. I'm sailing after all. I thought you didn't have your boat fair. Seems that this saintly old gentleman rescued some of my loot the other night. Yeah, he dropped under the table in excitement. And so with the bag of gold, the prodigal returns to Gramercy Park. Licked. Well, there won't be any bands to play, if that's what you mean, ma'am. Or any poems to write? No, I guess not. I won't have much time for writing poetry, and... Anyhow, I kind of run out of subject matter. Write about a harpy who smiled at you and cheated you. Write about that. That's what you believe, isn't it? That I'm a cheat. No, I don't believe that. Then why are you crawling out without giving yourself another chance? Ah, oh, Swan, he just got up for another ticket. Let him go. There's no way for a man to go to crawl out of the Golden West with just the price of a ticket. Not when there's still a chance. Listen, son, I'm again. it. Go on, go away, thinking that I stole your money and that I'm sending you back licked and broke. I'll try the black again, ma'am. Your son is pure folly. Wait for him, Bill. The gentleman from Gramercy Park bets on the black. Here it goes. Well, this teaches me I'll never do a good deed again. Staking your whole future on a little ball rolling. Why, it's an outrage. It's not much of a future. Win or lose. 17 on the black. Walls it in the mountain, you win. How much did he have, Bill? 320. You're letting it ride, Mr. Carmichael? I... I don't know, ma'am, I... The play is made. Here it goes. Snatch it off, son, while there's time. Twenty-two, the black. Suffering mode. You win again. I can't wow. believe it. Make your place, sir. Pick it up, son. Pick it up. Here it goes. Pick it up, kids. You're talking about. Well, are you leaving it on the number, Mr. Carmichael? Son, it's a million to one, I tell you. You'll write something about the fog, won't you? About how people forget where they are and who they are. Thirteen. And it's black. You win again, Mr. Carmichael. A bonanza. Pay off, Bill. The game is closed. Do I win all that, ma'am? The Belladonna pays 35 to 1 on a number always, Mr. Carmichael. Hurry, Bill. Get him on the boat. I'll take it. Ma'am, I don't know quite what to say, but... Well, say it to somebody else, not me. I've seen quite enough of you for one day or for one lifetime. I'm afraid, Mr. Carmichael, I'm not as good a loser as you were. Come on, son. Don't stand around now. Come on. and the vigilantes? I do. Fine here. 
What do we do first? Get your molly. That's fine by me. Yeah, the guns are in there. Pass them around. All right, boss. <laughs> Law and order, huh? Well, here's my orders, and don't get them wrong. Round up the boys and find out where these vigilantes are meeting. What are you going to do, boys? I'm going to set fire to San Francisco. I'm going to burn down every building with a vigilante in it. There's a wind coming up. Well, it's blowing the right way. Yeah, just a minute. We need plenty of money. How much have we got downstairs, Bill? We ain't got much. What do you mean? You tell us, Swan. What happened? We lost. What table? Mine. How much? Bill counted it out. A little over 40,000. Who ran the wheel? I did. Go on, boys. You got your orders. I'll be along. Here, you stay here. Who was he, Swan? A Mr. Carmichael. Who's that? One of your employees. The fellow with all them fancy words. So that's him, huh? That's the fellow you traded me in for. Where is he, Swan? Gone. Gone, huh? <laughs> Listen, I'm going out and bring your little friend back to see you again. I'm bringing him back so that you can listen to his pretty poetry. Lock her in, Bill, and keep her waiting till I come back with her, sweetheart. You heard what he said. Molly is looking for you, sir. I was told. Well, I don't think this is quite the place for you to hide. I'm not hiding. Then what do you want? I... I don't know. Oh, you fool, get out of here. Don't you understand? They're outside of that door. He's looking for you to kill you, Shamali. He's out there looking for you. He's going to kill you. Why should he want to do that? Because he's mad. Crazy mad. Because he's laboring under the delusion that, that I'm in love with you. Are you? <laughs> you must be mad, too. I'm much worse than that. I'm stupid. Love's the only thing I've thought of or read about since I was knee high. That's what I've always dreamed of, of meeting somebody and falling in love. And when that remarkable thing happened, I was going to recite poetry to her for hours about how her heart's an angel's wing and her hair the strings of a heavenly harp. Instead, I got drunk. And how I got I called her a harpy. And I'm pretty stupid. I love you. <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? Why did you come back to me? Make me cry. Oh, please go on. Thank you. Thank you for being what I thought you were nice. So nice. Are you coming back with me? No. Oh, no. I love you. That's why I can't come. If you just wanted Swan, it'd be different. But you want somebody that doesn't exist anymore. Oh, I, I stole your money and I gave it back to you, and that pleased you. That's all it is. It pleased you. I wasn't as bad as you thought. Come on, you must go. They're looking for you. They'll kill you. You're wasting a lot of time talking. Because you're coming with me. No. Oh, no. You're dreaming of something that isn't me. Look at me someday. And, and I'm looking at you now. <laughs> I'm no good. I'm no good to you. Don't make me see. Too much has happened to me. It happens to Swan, not to you. Listen to me. There's something inside of people that can't be touched. They can stand in mud up to their necks. But that thing inside stays bright and shining. Well, I want to believe you. Oh, you must believe me because it's true. Loving wipes out everything else. All this never existed. You'll see. Are you sure? Oh, no, no, don't tell me. Even if you aren't sure. Even if it isn't true. Take me with you. Hey, where you are. Keep quiet. Nobody's going to get hurt. Where's your molly? Here he is, 
boss in front of me. I'm with you anyway. Come here. Where'd that green bag go? I ain't got no conception where he But he was seen with you last. Well, I was trying to collect some money he owed me. Well, what'd he say? Well, he drawed his gun, and while I was grappling with him, I slipped in the mud and down I went. Hey, and he's George. on top of me like 20 wildcats. Oh, the Clarn and the... They came in, the vigilantes. They're looking for you. They're busting up the whole place. Where's Swan? She got away through the window. I seen her running off through the park. There was somebody with her. Mm -hmm. I took the other window. Listen, Shut boys. Up. She went off with that fellow, huh? Well, then she'll try coming around to the boat. Yeah, but she's too smart to come down this way. But, boys, Shut listen. up. She'd probably try rowing around to the offside. We'll get some boats. We'll lay for them. You stay here and watch the wall. But what about you them? You stay here, like I told you. Come on, we'll get some boats. Right where old atrocity said it would be. Bless his heart. <laughs> Hurry, darling. You just sit there and steer. Hey, Porter, starboard, and I'll obey. You still love me? Oh, my dear, ask me that when I'm an old woman with gray hair. And I'll tell you, I haven't begun to love you yet. I'll have to wear this dress for three months. You'll get terribly tired of it. We'll put it in a museum. There's a good one in Hoboken. Shh. I thought I heard something. No, oh, that was me, flying through the air. Head straight to the big boat. Grow carefully, darling. He's sure to figure out where we're going, and he'll come after us. You happy? Um, but I wish I had some other dress on there. I must look so foolish. It'll take me from here to China and back to tell you how you look. You look... Birds. That's a bird hunting for fish. We've turned the wrong way. Starboard, Mr. Carmichael, darling. It's hard rowing when you're so emotional. Darling, where's your money? Lordy, I forgot. I left it right outside your window. That's the most idiotic thing I've ever done. Thirty thousand. Forty, darling. Do you mind? I don't mind anything. Same here. I'm rowing out of the Golden West. Oh, with... no, me. Shh. I heard something. Somebody's rowing over there. Listen. Here, keep pulling, you weasel. Shh, Molly. Don't mind. I don't. Get back about not liking the fog. I'm very fond of fog. So am I. They're moving in the same direction. Darling, the fog's thinning. Is it? A little. Here comes the moon. Yeah, this is one poet that hates the moon. Stand there, boys. A little to the left. Pull on. They've heard us. They're coming this way. Don't you fool, you'll hit her. Get down, get down. I don't forgive that room. Are you all right? I'm very frightened, but otherwise... Can you row any faster, darling? I'll try. Jim. Jim, I love you. I adore you. Whatever happens. What is it? A little accident. Oh, we can't make it, Jim. Jump over. You can swim. Get down, get down. Oh. Keep pulling. No, that's all right, but hurry. Come on, darling. You'd get away, huh? The moon. The moon was on your side. Wait. Get out of the way. I'm going to put him out of his misery. Louis, wait before you should listen to what I have to say. Louis, listen. You wanted something from me. You wanted me to love you. You've held me in your arms and you've asked me to love you. Do you still want it, Louis? Do you? 
because if you do, I will. I love you. I promise you, I will. Only don't kill him. Let him go, Louis. Let him go. And I love you the way you've always wanted me to. I'll forget him. I swear I will. He never even touched me. He never even kissed me, Louis. Let him go. You. No, no, I swear it. And on account of him, you'll feel for me like I've always wanted you to. No, no. On account of him. No, it's not just on account of him. But, but if you do this, you'll be, you'll be a fine man. You'll be the kind of a man that a woman could love. Well, how do I know you'll do all that? Because I give you my word. Not Swan's word, but the word of somebody you haven't even known yet. Somebody that you like much better than Swan. I'll do it. <laughs> I gotta do it. Yeah, that's what I want. Come here. Pick him up. What for? Pick him up, do you hear me? Pick him up and throw him on that boat. Them both. I want him on that boat. There are lots of people in this town trying to give me orders, but you ain't. Oh, do what I told you. Be careful. Please be careful. Uh. There, he'll make it. We'll have him on his feet before he lands in New York. The tide is changing, sir. Well, folks, you'd better be saying goodbye. We're sailing. Goodbye, son. Goodbye. You left something outside the window. I give it all to the captain, every bit of it. There was five bags. Can you imagine? I must have missed this one. Goodbye, son. Mary. Mary. Yes, Jim. We made it. Be quiet, darling. Don't talk. Nothing can ever come between us anymore. No. Go to sleep, darling. Hello. I'm full of cockles. We'll take good care of him, miss. Come on. Hold everything up. Thank you, Louis. You did thank me. Well, thank you again. I'll always thank you. you. You'll never regret it, I swear it. So that's the way a woman looks when she's in love. I really Louis, do stop. And that's the way she cries when she loves somebody. Yeah, hurry, hurry, please. Yeah, wait a minute. You're going to love me now. You're going to look like that for me, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I'm going to keep my word. You're never going to regret it. I'm never going to regret it because I'm never going to see you again. I don't take presents off spittoon cleaners. I don't take presents off anybody. I give them. Hey, I... I got things to do in this town without tying myself up to somebody that's going to cry for somebody else all the time. What's the matter with you? Don't you understand English? Go on back to him. Go on now. Shivali. We want you. All right. What are you standing there for? Say goodbye? All right. That the way a gentleman does it? Come on. <laughs> 